I'm Van. I'm sorry. And this is Sin Maha. With the weaves of the. Who is this for? This is for Metal Cat. Metal, Metal Cat. Shout out to Metal Cat. Uh, that sounds really, really cool. Um, yeah, I know. So we're just gonna uh, finish explaining to you guys what we're about. If you're new to the channel, come and welcome. Uh, <laughs> if you're I'm new to the to, channel, I'm gonna and get some mute on so I can try to fall asleep tonight. in five hours. If you are new to the channel and you're wondering how in the world did Metal Cat get a song reacted to, there's a couple ways to get that done. One of them is the option that he picked, which is. Vin likes to call it the, the capitalist story way. Basically what you do is you jump on Patreon or you can do PayPal, Cash App, all the links are in the description of this video. And it's $125 your first time. After you do three song reactions with us, it jumps you down to 75 per song. So that's kind of like a little perk of kind of doing more than one with us. Um, but if you're like, holy moly, that's insane. Say, look, come here. If you're thinking that's totally insane and I would never want to spend that amount of money, there are other ways. You can join Patreon. Come here. This is my daughter, Sayla. You can join Patreon and you, it's a dollar a month is how, is how you can jump in there. And then you join up in groups called alliances and then they work together to influence our song reaction list. Say hello to the nice people. Hello. <laughs> What's up? You waiting for prayer? Yes. Okay, I shall return. Okay. All right. Prayer's done. Uh, so what now? What's the name of the okay. Sin Mara? Sin Mara. All right, and let's uh, let's go. I don't think this sounds like a black metal band. Ouch! Are they a black metal band? I don't know. I just pinched myself with these headphones. Okay, ready? Wait, I want to get the lyrics. We get the lyrics. I know, but you always say there's no sense stopping or waiting. All right, go ahead. We got it. Oops. Mm -hmm. so you had me unplug that. Thought you're all smart and shy. Well. I was right. They are black metal.
Whoa. The uh, ending of that was really pretty. Well, that's the thing about black metal sometimes. It's like, who was that song? It was that girl, and she was like in a hijab. Yeah. It was, a black, it was like black metal from Turkey or something like that. I forgot the name of it. A N something. Like, Anome or something yeah. like that. That was. It was really well. Not only did it sound beautiful, but it was also inspiring. It was like a positive. Yeah. Yeah. Really, really, truly inspirational um, song. So. So black metal is is is. It, it it's my favorite genre in metal. I, I think like that. That's probably like the biggest. Uh, I can't believe it's your favorite. That's probably the well. It, it's probably. I mean, I can because, believe it. It's probably because all the other genres are like so accessible mainstream wise. Like you can have a mainstream like Metallica were mainstream, even though they were thrash and they were underground. Corn became mainstream. You don't really see a black, a true cult black metal band that like I don't think Magua is ever going to become like mainstream. Mm -hmm. So what it means is is that the 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 signatures and things like that are not something I hear all the time. Right. It takes a particular palette, though, to that, be able and to... That, and I love tremolo picking. ...to appreciate it. Well, yeah, some of them. Like, the real, real true cult stuff that doesn't make any, like, musical sense or whatever. <laughs> like, I yeah, I don't like... Yeah. Like, the early... But, with, like, the... What was it? The, the classic black metal song that we did, and, like, we reviewed, and I was like, I'm sorry. Like, the winter one, the frozen something, whatever... Yeah. From yeah, yeah, yeah. from who, mayhem. It was a mayhem song, and, and I was just like, nah, not feeling it. You know what I mean? Like, but Magua, Matushka, bands like that, like that, like push the genre, and it's just beautiful music, and and obviously the tremolo picking. I love that, you know. So I, I guess it just depends. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, like, it just depends. For me, it's a mood thing. There's some moods that I get in where I'm like, if I hear this type of song in that mood, it's getting a zero. Really? Yeah. And then there are other times where I'm like, oh, okay, I kind of like this. <laughs> it's uh, literally a mood thing. Yeah, well... I it, think that means that it's not my forte. Yeah, Freezing Moon, Freezing Moon. But I feel like I... Did I like that one? I feel like I liked that one. Which one, Freezing Moon? Yeah. No, we both didn't like Freezing Moon. Um, and, and, like, people were like... Oh, oh, it's yes, it's because well they were they were, oh it's because you're Christians and blah 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 <laughs> and you know yada 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 it's like oh that has nothing to do with it that That's... has nothing whatsoever to do with it at all. I was watching the show <laughs> Just, with Sela. Like, we didn't like the song. It's like period. the ground is lava or something like that, and so they have to do all of these like gymnastics basically to win the thing. And I said, oh, it would be so fun is if they had two competing teams, a Christian team and a Satanist team, and then Sela was like, well. It would be so obvious as to who would win. I'm like, who? And then she said that the Satanist team would obviously win because Christians are just basically lazy and they just all sit around. I'm like, how can you say that? I was like, and then I brought up you. She was like, well, I mean, nobody's like him. She said that you would definitely win. And then she was like, actually, no, he probably wouldn't because he'd slip on the slime. <laughs> Which is true, like, if it was just about, like, raw, like, get it done, yes. But if you had to be careful of slime, mm. <laughs> Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, I, I think Satanists are generally very skinny. Like, black metal people are generally Yeah, like, I totally very, very disagreed skinny. with her. They're very skinny people. I was like, well, it depends. How can you even make that judgment call? I mean, I I'm feel sure like that Zen, there's... I feel like Zen would be able to, to kill that thing. Like, you put Zen and Lindsay in there, I feel like me and you would beat them because you're stronger than Lindsay. Like you're 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 like a, a professional athlete level woman, like strength wise. Um, and I, I you know I, I probably cancel out Zen. No, no, no. You know why? What I've, noticed, what I've He's noticed what I've noticed on the tall. show is that if people get uncomfortable and they don't like overshoot and really just throw themselves across the room, they lose. And Zen keeps everything like his his extremities. He keeps them close to the chest. Do you notice that he's not like everything's kind of like so? I don't, I don't yeah. see him throwing himself over slime to get onto this. Like, well, I don't know. Like, based on the last interview, he kind of came out of his little shell. Yeah, maybe Lindsay could shout get him to the big, shout out to the big homie. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, yeah. But anyway, I, I generally, you, you know, but but black metal is my favorite genre. Like, because and I just feel okay, like so, it's extremely, right, I, it's just an extremely diverse genre. If black metal 
was like everybody loved it and people barely liked other types of metal. Still love it. You'd still be. Oh, yeah. Because I was a corn kid at the height of corn's popularity. Mm hmm. True. So that, that, that stuff he doesn't. Says popular instead of saying popular. That stuff doesn't influence me. You know what I'm saying? Like, because yeah. then you're, you're, you're being, you're conform, you're still being trapped no, by I, people's I, opinion. I, yeah. Yeah. So that that doesn't affect me, but no, it, it's it's not that black metal is so underground. It's just that it they're allowed to do things other people are not because it's black metal, mm -hmm. you know. And so there are certain risks that you take sonically that, like, even in our band, I wouldn't take. I'm like, oh, you can't do that. So, and and, and, and but a lot of the stuff is just plain beautiful. Like, if you look lyrically at this song, like these guys. Like so, li lyrically, what they can do is insane. Like to traverse labyrinthine tunnels, mm -hmm. you know, like uh, within the weaves of infinity, transgression of the Molybdean pathways, dimensional, dimensional nomadic flight to enter the halls of ageless majesty. Like I know you're so allowed to, to to go there yeah. as a black metal. Whereas Absolutely, regular metal. It's like right. people are gonna say, "Oh, you're being oh, you're pretentious." Just stretching. Yeah, yeah. I think that. Sometimes, like, oh, actually a lot of times, and I think I've already said this before, when it gets so poetic sounding like that and pretty, I, I lose, I don't know what they're talking about. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, I understand that. I mean, I kind of had a, a an understanding of where they were going just by the title. You know, within the weaves of infinity, I'm like, okay, this is like some sort of astral travel type of thing. And so... Really? Yeah, when he talks about dimensional nomadic flight... Mm -hmm. It's like you're taking the concept of being a nomad and then you're like universalizing it, like literally. Because a nomad is somebody who just goes oh, from yeah, place to place. But what if you could like go from dimension to dimension in the universe? That would be ridiculous. You'd still Do be you... a nomad, but you would just be a, a nomad on a, a much cooler one. <laughs> grander scale. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Do you think that... Um... Maybe this is too... So you think that this could be like astral projection? somewhat or you're talking like this is talking about like something that we don't even like, this is way beyond that because you're actually going all kinds of different places no because people who astral project believe that they're they were literally there they don't believe that they're dreaming or hallucinating what they do believe, you think about that they believe that they're really at those places so is that something you're not going to dig into right now yeah i'm not I, I'm, I, I, know, I see that look in your face i know where you're going i'm not going to have a conversation on camera but, oh, I, I'm not going anywhere. I'm curious. I, I, I don't no, I'm know what I your see where are. you're going as far as where you want me to oh, go. Oh, yeah. I want to know uh, what you think about that. I've got a lot of thoughts about it, but I I'm, bet not, you I'm do. not going to talk about them on camera. But, but so I understood where he was going. And again, I don't know if the song is about astral projection. I don't know. But it's, you know, a dimensional nomadic flight to enter the halls of ageless majesty, a femural unbound, the temporal aorta severed. So could it be death? Well,. It could be. It could also be a DMT trip, right? Like, <laughs> the temporal aorta severed. That doesn't necessarily mean that you're severing your aorta. You're just sev you're severing the, the connection you have to time, which is something that a lot of people talk about when they're oh. on their DMT trip, is they, they feel timelessness, oh. whatever that means. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which is something I think about a lot. Like, what is time? Mm -hmm. Um, does time actually have an ontology in the in the in the universe, right? Like, if it wasn't for entropy, would we even be able to have an understanding of what time is, right? So, oh, yeah. Right. Which is why when you're having fun, time flies. Right. And when you're having a miserable time, like entropy feels like it's really pulling at you. It's the time drags. Well, yeah. Because yeah. like when we were in the sauna today, and I was like. There's, there was two minutes left. I'm like, oh, I thought you said seven minutes. You're like, two minutes, seven minutes. They're basically the same thing. Same thing, I'm yeah. Like, no, they're not. Yeah, you get into relativity and stuff, but like, it, it's it's like, uh, it's, a, it's a really, it's a really interesting, the first time I ever even, time, first, first time I ever even questioned that concept, it was actually Prince. And somebody said something about like a watch or something like that. And Prince said like, Oh, I haven't had a watch since like 1978 or something like that. And the guy goes, "Well, why not?" And then Prince goes, "Because uh, time is a man-made construction." Blah blah blah. 
I mean, fine. But and of course, of course, of course, of course, a big part of me was like, well, then why did you say since 1978? <laughs> <laughs> That's a measure of time. Oh no! <laughs> it's you know what? It has got to be a curse. And just also, like, like, life must be more entertaining for you because you pick up on those things without even trying. But see, I could, but see, <laughs> but see, if I was Prince, I could respond and say, well, I'm just condescending to, to tell your, you because you, your level. you've been full of it. So, so speaking in baby language for you, that's so but, funny. But yeah, like, you know, when he, so he talks about, you know, entering the halls of angels' majesty. You know, mm -hmm. the temporal aorta severed. Like, it's about being. And then he talks about the serpentine spine broken, which, know. you know, if you get into some of this Kundalini stuff, mm -hmm. like they, they, you know, they have the serpent and it's coiled at the base of your spine and all this jazz. It's like oh, really? Mix of Hinduism and New Age oh. stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think it's probably what he's talking about right there. Dweller at the threshold, the point at which a cross modes meet. crossroads meet, vessel of migration along the stream of transient states of being. I mean, this is like, this is next level stuff. Yeah. You know, just write Kundalini, and it'll be in there. You're, you're looking at serpent coiled at the base of the spine. Yeah. I told but, you it's Kundalini. Yes. Yeah, so well, I didn't even there. know how to it's spell Kundalini, and if I knew if I asked, you know what you were gonna say? Oh, it's spelled like it sounds. Is it spelled spelled like it sounds? How no. is what you gonna say? Kun? K O O N Kun. It could be C O. There's lots of different ways. What What's the hard O sound like? O, right? Yeah. What's a hard U sound like? U. Right. So Kundalini. So it wouldn't be O. It would be U. How can you know that? If I say it's spelled like it sounds, then you just go with that. No. What? Spell it right oh. now. Don't look at it. Don't look at it. So you know there's a. Well, U now spell. I know it's U. So spell it. C U N. D A L I N I. And you pretty much had it aside from the K. Good lord. What did I say? See? Yeah. But, I mean, oh, I meant K. I yeah. had K in my head because I saw it was a K. Uh -huh. But still, uh -huh. how could you know that? But anyway. <laughs> Residing in the wrist between the worlds in singular multiplicity. That's really interesting. So, Sori is looking at the, the serpents and the Kundalini thing at the base of the spine. It's not at the base, it goes all the way up your spine. Yeah, but it's coiled at the base of your spine when you're in a certain uh, situation. What, what do you mean? What do you mean situation? Like it's a certain like state of mind that it's coiled at? Yeah. Interesting. <clears throat> Secrets and dangers of the coiled serpent. Why is Kundalini Yoga dangerous? Yeah, that's it's probably uh, Christian. That's what I was thinking. Guaranteed. Anyway. Guaranteed. Um, prism eye glaring in the chamber of dead stars. I mean, the, the dude can ride his ass off, bro. That's what I'm Spectral saying. emanations That's shattered what I'm on the horizon's edge. You gotta give it to him. Among them. ancient ruins. You know, there's this that thing that got found in Arizona. Nobody knows what it is. It's just this like mysterious steel thing found in Arizona, and uh, people are like, what the hell is that? What was thing? it? I, I have no idea. Uh, I have no idea what it is, but it, it's it's a uh, very very interesting. Yeah, it's like this metal monolith was found. What? In, yeah, yeah, it's real. There's been a lot of shit that has happened in this in this year that is like mind blowing. Like even on mainstream media, and nobody's talking about it. Like that's weird. The U.S. government says we have found uh, uh, flying objects that do not originate on this planet. Like they came out and said that. Literally came out and said that. It was on like. Tucker Carlson, like it was like mainstream media. Yeah, but nobody cares because they're worried maybe. about Trump and all this. Like, maybe, maybe. It's, Look, just, it's unbelievable. Did stuff. you see this? Yeah. Did you see these heads that yeah. they actually, when they un they have little, they have bodies. Did you know that? Yeah, I mean this is this is been a thing. Oh, this is been a thing. I didn't know that. I saw it on Facebook. <laughs> but anyway. Um, so there, there's just a lot, there's just a lot here, like lyrically, where these oh guys, oh my gosh, I know, these guys are going like, and, and you know, it's it's hard, like a lot of times I sit there and I watch YouTube and I'm watching these people talk about these things and I'm like, how is nobody interested in this? I mean, people talk about like astral projection or DMT or things like that. People are having these crazy experiences. And these are not like, these are not Christian people. These are. You know, atheists, agnostics, well, whatever, whatever, like, and they're having these experiences, and they're saying, they're saying, 
you know, they're saying pretty close to what we were saying about the spirit or whatever. They just have some modernist or postmodernist scientific spin to try to explain it. But, like, they're having the same experiences that you've read. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. It, it's just it's it's unbelievable and and so like songs like this kind of puts you kind of in that in that kind of state of mind you know the distant echo of world of words once spoken that i mean think about that like you i could spend There's literally could say on that. five hours on that one line the distant echo of words once spoken yeah so like i mean just monuments laying fields of moss once brilliant scepters by rust really long corroded New shine and new in the towering eye of eternity. I mean, good lord. Resounding in the formless reaches of unborn worlds, submerged in the deepest slumber, dormant in primordial stasis. Ooh! Somnambulant sojourn to oblivion, which we know now, based on the, uh, the Zen song, that that means you're sleepwalking. Mm -hmm. Sinking into the sea of opaque shades, bathed in translucent rivers in union with the absolute Holy moly! In union with the absolute. I am go that line right there. Bathed in translucent rivers, in union with the absolute. Ooh! Entranced <gasps> by the song of a hundred voices, oh my gosh, I just absorbed by limitless light. Woo! Which is the ain't so right? Yeah, that's, that's crazy. Such a cr that line. That is the the best four lines I've heard in the entire freaking. I don't know. Wow. Definitely this year. I don't know. Maybe ever. That that, that band. One of your favorite. Your favorite band of 2019 had some some dingers in it. But holy moly, that right there. I honestly, honestly, I'm gonna take a picture of that. I I might get that as a tattoo. Like I'm not even joking. I might literally get that as a tattoo. Like that is well, how crazy those lyrics are, and they're yeah. extremely meaningful. Uh, yeah. Let me take a picture right now. Come on. That that's that is that's just crazy. Bathed in translucent rivers, in union with the absolute, entranced by the song of a hundred voices, absorbed by limitless life. Okay. Wow. Period. That's, in yeah. Over. That that that's giving it a high score right there. Over. Forget but, yeah, it. But what do you think he's talking about? Because I have no I know how clue. I would translate that. Hey, Mr. Mr. Uh, uh, Sinmara person, reach out to your boy, Vinansori at gmail.com, and tell me what the hell you meant by that, bro. That That is, like, it's very ridiculous. Curious. Yeah. Like, Danny Filth can write... You look at you look at what Danny writes, you're like, holy, this dude is freaking... He, 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 I said it over and over again. He's the most gifted lyricist in, in metal, mm -hmm. in rock in music period mm -hmm. I would say probably period him and Jay-Z yeah like, they're probably the two most gifted lyricists of, of my time period but there's a different it, you know we were kind of talking about this off camera with Lindsay and, and uh, Zen where we were talking about like guitar and progressive metal and like yeah sure you can sweep and blah blah mm -hmm. blah but like can you move me right right this is like the most moving four lines i've heard all uh, year yeah and it's it's inspiring and it's beautiful and there is an entire freaking universe inside those four lines that are absolutely like insanely insanely good mm -hmm. so just for those four lines alone, this song's getting a high score. What are you giving it? I'm giving it a 10 because, one, I loved the way that, that like they had the beauty intertwined in it. And then some of these lyrics like were bumping the score up. And then when we hit that point, I was like, oh my gosh. And so that bumped it to a 10. Yeah, I know a lot of people are going to be like, what? Like, mm -hmm. those are good lyrics, but the best. Are... But, but again, like that, every single line means a lot to me personally mm -hmm. because of my personal walk with God and, and where I'm at spiritually and things like that and it's just one of those things where that specific set of lines hit at exactly the right time that's like massive but again this is this is what black metal can do which it's just the irony is crazy because that so is unexpected. like more worshipful yep. than a lot of the uh, worshipful but you, yep. you, in like Christian music you can't go there because of the almost chronic necessary underestimation of the audience mm -hmm. that the you know it's like 
there was this one you the first time it hit yeah. me it was like I saw this one YouTube clip and the guy was like every Christian song you've ever heard for the last 10 years and the guy was playing the exact same chord the exact same progression and he was I was just like no I had such a hard time getting into Christian music in the first place I was like no it's even worse than I thought so like Sonically, Christian, a lot of, a lot, not all, but a lot of Christian music, is, you, you know, they, they underestimate their, their audience and then lyrically forget it. Mm -hmm. It's, forget it. Yeah. So, um, Holy Mold, this is a 10 for me. What do you give it? I already gave it a 10. There you are, dear listener. Woo. Email me, Vin out. Sorry out. Gone.